Hello, fourth graders. We are ready for today's math lesson, and we are on Module 5, Lesson 22, and we will be adding and subtracting a fraction and a whole number. So when you complete your table of contents, go ahead and flip to your math notes for today. We have two pages, and so we'll start here on page 1, where you can see our objective says, I can add and subtract fractions with a whole number using visuals and decomposition. And so our visuals today are going to be a tape diagram. And our decomposition means we're going to create number bonds to help with our subtracting especially. But we're going to start on this first page by adding. And it, said, it says add using a tape diagram. Now fourth graders, we're familiar with adding whole numbers and fractions. And we know that when I see a whole number plus a fraction, it's going to look like a mixed number. And remember, a mixed number has a whole number and a fraction. And so this part, friends, is going to be pretty simple, right? We've done this before where I have 2 and plus 1 half. And I know that I can create a tape diagram to help me with that. And so I'm going to section this off, and I'm going to call this 1. And I'm going to make another, here's one, okay, and I'm going to go ahead and say this is another whole one, okay. So I just split my tape diagram into three parts, and I'm going to shade, first of all, my two. I'm going to say, okay, I have two holes, okay. And then I'm adding one half. Now, if I were to find a half, I don't see it, but I see one whole, and I know that I could decompose this again in half, and now I would color half. And my answer would become two and a half. Right? I know that when I can add a whole number and a fraction, all I really do is smush those together to create a mixed number. So in the same way, if I add 3 plus 2 thirds, I'm going to show it on my tape diagram because that's what I've been asked to do. So I'm going to show 3 plus some more. So I'm going to turn my tape diagram, and I'm going to make it look like this. Here's one whole. Here's another one. So, so far I have two. Here's another one. So far I have three, but I know I needed to add some more. So that's why I made four holes. And so I'm going to shade my three. One hole, two holes, three holes. It's important that you're labeling it as one so I don't get confused and think that this is now three-fourths, right? And now I need to add two-thirds. Well, that means I need to look at this last piece and turn it into thirds. And so if I were to divide it into thirds, I would decompose it this way. Now I have one, two, three thirds. That makes a whole. And I need to shade two of them to match. And so now my tape diagram matches three and two thirds. So it's important, fourth graders, that you're able to show us what that tape diagram looks like when you add together a whole number and a fraction using that tape diagram. Now we're going to look and we're going to switch gears a little bit. And our directions say, given three related numbers, form a fact family. Well, fourth graders, my fact family, I know that that has related operations. And our operations that are related today that we're going to focus on are addition and subtraction. And I know that when I make a fact family, I can use two addition sentences and two subtraction sentences to get a fact family. And so this first one says I'm going to use these three numbers, 3 fourths, 6 and 3 fourths, and 6. And so if I wanted to make a number sentence to e using only these numbers, that doesn't mean I get to pull any numbers out of anywhere else. I can only use these numbers. I'm going to start with saying 6 plus. So I've taken care of this one. And I'm going to say 6 plus 3 fourths, all right, I took care of this one, equals, I only have one more option, 6 and 3 fourths. Now here's the special thing about addition and subtraction. 
I can flip-flop my numbers around. So with my addition, my other addition sentence would look like this. 3 fourths plus 6 equals 6 and 3 fourths. All I did was switch those two numbers, whoops, switch those two numbers that I was adding to equal my new number sentence. Now, I took care of my two addition sentences. Now I need two subtraction sentences to the, make the rest of my family. I know that when I subtract, I always have to start with the largest number I was given, and this time that's 6 and 3 fourths. That's my whole mixed number. Minus. So now I can pick, all right, let's subtract the 3 fourths first. And now I'm left with 6. And that means that my last one, again, I'm starting with the biggest number that I have available, and that's 6 and 3 fourths. I already tried it subtracting 3 fourths, so this time I'll subtract 6 and I'm left with 3 fourths. And there's my fact family. All of those numbers are related because I can use them in these number sentences this way. So now let's try it one more time. I have 5, 4 and 1 third, and 2 thirds. Now, this number, these numbers seem related, right? I can see that I smushed 3, and four, three fourths and 6 together to equal 6 and 3 fourths. This one's a little bit different. These don't quite seem like they go together. But if I were to start by adding, okay, and I'm going to start with 4 and 1 third, because I know when I add, I don't want to start with the biggest. And I add 2 thirds. Let's think for a second. 2 thirds plus 1 third equals 3 thirds. And I know that another way to call 3 thirds is one whole. And 4 and another one whole does indeed equal 5. So there's my first addition sentence. Now remember with addition, all I have to do is switch or roo my numbers and say 2 thirds plus 4 and 1 third equals 5 again. So there's my two addition sentences. Now remember with subtraction, I start with the largest. And that would be 5 in this case. And I'm going to subtract from the largest number available. And I'm going to start and subtract my fraction of 2 thirds. And remember, I can only use these numbers. So the answer is already given to me, fourth graders. And I get 4 and 1 third. Now my last subtract and subtraction sentence, again, I start with 5. But this time I'm switching these two digits and saying minus 4 and 1 third equals 2 thirds. So that's how I can make my fact family. All right, flip to your next page of notes for me. And now we're going to look at subtraction. So we were able to easily add using our tape diagram. I know I just smushed them together. But when I subtract, I can't smush my numbers together because I can't take that away. So we're going to see how to subtract using our tape diagram. So my first problem says 3 minus 1 fourth. So I'm going to turn this tape diagram into 3, okay? Notice how I just made it, one big 3 on top. And so I'm going to go ahead and split it. So here's 1, right? Here's 2, and here's 3, 3 holes. But now I want to subtract 1 fourth. Well, I don't have fourths anywhere here. So somehow I need to create fourths. And so I'm going to focus on just one whole. I'm going to ignore this, these two first parts. I'm going to look at this. I know that this is one whole. And so because it's one whole, I can turn it into four fourths. One, two, three, four. This is just the same. One whole is the same thing as four fourths. Now that I have fourths, I can take away one of them, and so I'm going to cross it out, okay? I'm going to get rid of that one-fourth. Now I need to look and see, okay, what do I have left? I have one, two. So I have two whole pieces. And I have one-fourth. All of these are one-fourths. So I have one-fourth, two-fourths and three-fourths. So when I ask what is three minus one-fourth, my answer is two and three-fourths, okay? 
because I know also if I were to add and go back looking at a fact family and add two and three fourths plus my extra one fourth, then I end up with my three holes again. So let's look at another one. This time I have three minus two thirds. So again, I'm gonna label my whole tape diagram as three. I'm gonna partition it off as such to show that here's one hole, two holes, three holes. Okay. But I need to subtract two thirds. Well, I don't have any thirds, so I'm gonna take one of my whole pieces and turn it into thirds. So I'm gonna come and make it thirds, one third pieces. Okay, because again, one equals three thirds. I haven't changed anything, I, I didn't add or subtract anything, I just renamed it. And now it asks me to take away two thirds. One, two. I'm gonna cross out and get rid of those two thirds. So when I'm looking for my answer, I have one hole, two holes, and I have one third left that I didn't get rid of. And so my answer is two and one third. So that's one way to subtract using our tape diagram. Now we're gonna look at how we can subtract using decomposition and use our number bond, okay? So if I have five minus one fourth, okay? I'm gonna look and see that, well, again, I can't take away any fourths because I only have a whole number. And so I wanna change that five. Okay. Somehow I've got to get fourths out of there somewhere. So just like I did over here in a tape diagram, I'm gonna take one whole piece away. So that means I'm gonna be left with four holes and four fourths. All I did was rename one of my whole pieces into fourths because I know this really is the same as one. So four and one makes five, okay? Now that I have four fourths, I'm able to take away one of them. And I'm gonna do that by looking at a number line again. Okay, so I'm gonna put four here because that's this whole number, and five here, that's this whole number. And I had decomposed it into fourths. And so I'm gonna turn this into fourths. Okay, four and one fourth four and two fourths, four and three fourths, five. And it asks me to take away one fourth. So I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna land here because I subtracted one fourth. And now I can look at this number line and figure out where did I land? Four and one fourth, four and two fourths, four and three fourths. That's what this number represents right here. So five minus one fourth equals four and three fourths. So our decomposition is kind of two steps, friends. We decompose it using our number bond and then I'm using a number line to help me. So let's try that one again. I have seven minus three fifths. Well again, I can't take away fifths yet. I don't have any. So I'm gonna take my whole number seven. Okay. I'm gonna take one away. So that leaves me with six holes. And then remember this is gonna turn into, you got it, five fifths. Okay, I still have seven, I just renamed it. So I'm gonna turn my number line and start from six to seven because those are my whole numbers I have here. I'm going to break apart my number line into fifths because that's the fraction I'm dealing with. Okay, so one fifth, two-fifths, three-fifths, four-fifths, five-fifths would be at seven. Okay, if it helps you, let's label those. One-fifth, two-fifths, three-fifths, four-fifths, five-fifths. So I'm gonna start here at my five-fifths at seven, and I'm subtracting three-fifths, so jump with me. One-fifth, two-fifths, three-fifths. Here's where I'm going to land. So I can see that it's six and two fifths when I subtract. Excellent job today, fourth graders. You're gonna be asked to use tape diagrams and decomposition, so using our number bond and number lines to help solve some subtraction problems. I want you to use the way that you are most comfortable with so that you can be successful today. Nice work.